So now we can just play our Torque. The nice thing here is Torque's gonna be really tall, so when he damages it with Arnegad, we actually like play out of tall move a little bit and kill it off. That's really good for us. Today we're going to be playing some hand buff nature's gift. The reason why is because <clears throat> it's kind of bored of playing the regular nature's gift. Now before you ask, yes this is worse than the regular meta deck of nature's gift. That's why the meta deck is the meta deck, is because it's better. But we'll go through and use this today. The idea here is we're going to hand buff a bit and we're going to play a big herald gourd just like he used to be before the nerf. Super big. That's the idea. Let's take a look at what we have here. Tactical advantage. Pretty standard, you're gonna buff something up in the beginning. We have Simlas to pull out our two Bountiful Harvests, a move you're probably all very familiar with by this point. Force Pack to replay <clears throat> to replay one. Ideally, you could replay something else if you need to. It's pretty flexible. Both Force gets whatever you need. Ethnlane is one change we have here. You'll notice there is no Gezeros slash um what's her name? Ethnique slot here we're playing Ithleen instead. This is for the hand buff. We can't afford the Gezra slash Ithleen without cutting, or Ethne without cutting out a whole bunch of stuff. So we had to cut out one of, cut out her. So we have Ithleen, she'll boost our hand up, put her on Torque, and then you get an extra four points. It's pretty good. Obviously not quite as good as Gezra or Ethne, but we're playing hand buff, so we're playing Ithleen. Isram's Council gets you what you need, pretty standard. Now, it had eight provisions left over once I was done with what I wanted to change. So, if we eight provision slot here, nothing I was really excited about. None of these really fit the deck, except I want to try out Frankson. Frankson, however you say his name. We've given this guy so many chances, I figured we'd give him one more shot here. You can protect one of our dryads. There's some key ones we want to protect, like um, Elven Seer. If it comes down to six, much better. Uh, Dunka coming down at 6 with 1 armor, also really good. So we'll try out Freaks in it. It's a little fortunate, he can only boost a Dryad. But he does make the Young Dryad, which helps out with the Harmony. Or not Harmony, the Symbiosis. So we'll be using him here. Just because there's nothing else in the, I really wanted to up into the 8 version slot. And then even in the 9s, if we were to cut out a 5 and boost to a 9 here. Yeah, nothing really here fits with the deck super well. You could make an argument that you want to include your Thegis or your Shaping Nature. Wouldn't blame me if you wanted to run those. And then we have Torque. So Torque's starting to start in our hand with Devotion. We just boost him. He actually can get up to a fairly high amount. Because you put Ithleen on him. That gives you an extra 4 value. And then you put Bountiful Harvests on him. And that gives him more value. And we're playing several Bountiful Harvests, ideally. And then we have the Fav. So just any of our Nature cards. Self-explanatory. Got the Dunka, boost in our hand, quite nice. You want Dunka to live, so usually this is the tactical advantage uh, target for you. Or you play it with Call of Forest or Council, if you can afford to, so she is fine. Doesn't die to something, like uh, Elder's Thunder, for example. Gord's our finisher, he's going to get taller than normal just because of the buffs. Bountiful Harvest, you play with Simlos most of the time. Global Hunter Sorceress, you want to make more of the Bountiful Harvest with her, if possible. And then you've got the Rebukes and two Circles of Life. We're running Double Circle of Life here, just because it's a hand buff card. Normally you'd only see one in these decks, but you can run. We're running two, because we want a buff in our hand. You're going to target Torque, obviously. So Death Blow is actually more important than usual, because you want to hit Torque with it. We've got the Hamadryads for the Leader Charges, the Elven Seers, the Dryad's Crest, and the one Tempering. I, the Tempering was the card I bumped by four provisions, so like we're here. And then you've got four provisions left. We had, let's be real here, we had 12 provisions here, and I put it with the Tempering. You could also, with these last, the Tempering and the Franks, you could also go with the Sixes. If you want Locks, you can put in a CRN and a Morin. You could fit that pretty well. 
but I want to give Frags a uh, shot again. You can also go for the Hawker Smugglers here if you want to go more all in on the hand buff. Up to you. This 12 provisions is really flexible. I, th I think the rest of the deck I would, well, the rest of the deck I'd say probably keep just how it is. If you want to play this hand buff version, here's where you can have your flexibility. Either double lock, which is something I wouldn't mind. You can go double orb if you really want to be fancy, but you don't have Alzir, so keep that in mind. I'd recommend either double lock for more control, or add in the Hawker Smugglers if you don't like the tempering and Frank Snet change. Yes, yeah, the deck. Let's uh, should be pretty good. Now, before we get into the game here, I want to mention that the reason this is worse than regular Nature's Gift. We take a look here. We'll save this for a second. Now, the reason this is worse than regular Nature's Gift is because you don't offset the weaknesses. So what is Nature's Gift weak to? It's weak to its Gourd getting removed as the last play, because a lot of Reliance in round 3, and the short round is on that tall Gourd. It's weaker than regular Nature's Gift to that because our Gourd is going to be taller, and more of our value goes into it. It's also weaker than regular Nature's Gift because we have a lot of tall cards, not just the Gourd, right? Uh, Torque's going to get pretty tall. And then we're gonna buff, probably going to buff, buff things in our hand more, so they're more vulnerable to removal. And the other thing that Nature's Gift has that we don't is either the Gezeros or the Wrath of Broccolon round, where the long round three, you can get a lot of engine value. We don't have that because we have the hand buff value instead. So our long round three is a little weaker, and our short round three is a little weaker. Does that make the deck worse? Worse? Probably, but I wanted to play it, so we're going to play it. And it's a little different. So let's just uh, go see how it does. All right, let's find our first opponent here. What will it be this time? Looks like Ursine Ritual. Well, I mean, I said looks like Ursine Ritual, but you can all tell it's clearly Ursine Ritual. So, here he is. Now the question is, what sort of deck is this? We'll find out pretty soon, I'm sure. Now, it's most likely, <clears throat> most likely a Lippy deck. That's what the most popular Ursine Ritual is, although you don't see a lot of Lippy anymore. So it could be something else, which would make this rather interesting. Now, he's probably going to think we're playing the meta Nature's Gift deck, which we actually are not, although we have a lot of its strong plays in our deck. We're just laughing its long round 3 card, and it's, uh, oh, he's going to go for the Cultist. We could fog out a Nature's Rebuke here and kill this. Like I was saying, though, we have, we lack the long 3, the long round 3 big card they have. But our short round 3 will be taller, because we have potentially both the Torque and the Gord. <coughs> now, <clears throat> now let's see what he goes for. Oh, that's interesting. Now, we already played our Fav for Rebuke, so we would have to kill this. We'd have to go into Call the Force and then our Force Protector. I don't want to do that. He's going to get a lot of value from these orders. That's fine. We will just contest it with our own value instead of trying to deal with them. That's what we'll go for here. That makes sense. Get another one. <clears throat> it's smart of him not to knock that second one down yet because we could hit it with a circle of life. Now the question is how long do we want to wait before we start playing our hand buff stuff? Ideally longer, so we can get more buffs on Gord, or not Gord, on a Torque. The other thing I have to watch out for is he's probably playing Heart of Terror, which makes our last play really important. Otherwise he'll Heart of Terror it. We'll play this. See if we can get this set up. Go Elven Seer next turn. Stunning Blow. Not unexpected. In our order. We've got 10 points from the Drummond and Ladies so far. Let's just play Elven Seer. We can go for a Dryad's Caress to get us 6, 6, and the Tama Dryad takes 3 times, so it'll be 15. Quite worth it. Speaking of worth it, that Flaminica getting him a lot of value. Quite a lot of value, but this is worth 15, eventually. Plus the 4 from the Trans I didn't count earlier, so this is a 19. Really good value, and then he will either have to keep contesting and risk us catching up, or he'll just pass. I think we play our second Hamadride here then. Then Ithleen Torque. We don't have. I don't want to play Ithleen Torque this round, I don't think. 
Although, yeah, the reason is we would boost Hamadryad with the Torque buff. And then Hamadryad's already going to be tall. I don't really like that. So we'll just play the Hamadryad. We'll keep Ithli and Torque for next round. And we'll be able to buff whatever else is in our hand. Because this will take a lot of points. Got a lot of engine value here. We got five more. We only need six points to take the round. It could be anything. Although I don't want it to be any of the... Th I don't want it to be... T We're not going to play Torque or Ithlene. We'll have to call the forest or council out something. Okay, he's going to pass. That's good for us. We'll get the last say for our gourd. And what do we want to play out of our deck here? Dunkle gets a potential carryover. We'll go for our Forest Protector to get us the points. He might be playing Knickers. It might secretly be a uh, Lippy deck. It looks a lot like a Lippy deck, just without Ceres. Not sure. Pretty interesting. Let's just go Forest Protector just in case. Make me a little nervous. Although there's no Roach, so it probably isn't, but there's no point in taking a risk that it is. Another thing is, Dunk how we can save for a longer round. A lot of silver cards don't play for six, by the way. Like, the Elven Seers and the Sorceresses don't. We had to play a gold card out of our deck there. And Frey Accident also only plays for, plays for eight, but we can't hand buff with him. Well, maybe we shouldn't have gone for Force Protector, but I was a little concerned he might have some kind of Mickers in his deck. It'd be annoying if he did. We'll go for this long round three here. And there's that guy. So we don't have the Gezros or Wrath of Broccolon for the long run three regulars. Regular Nature's Gift does. Like I said in the deck profile. But we instead have several tall cards from the hand buffs. What I'd like is... Okay, there's Simlos, and we keep the two these in our deck. We don't want to redraw in case we redraw it. But this round, we're going to buff our Torque a whole bunch. We can get Gord out. So we'll be fine. We buff our torque a whole bunch, and then we finish with a bunch of tall cards. That's the idea. question is, what's he setting up behind that? We can kill it with a Dunka Order and Nature's Rebuke. That being said, we'd have to get Nature's Rebuke from... We don't have it. So, we'll boost this so it doesn't die to Stunning Blow. And then we'll set up Dunka. We could get a Nature's Rebuke off of our Dolbatana Sorceress if we pull out our deck. That wouldn't be bad. Or we create some with Simlas. And he's going to draw us into... Oh, he drew us into Nature's Rebuke. Perfect. So we can actually kill the Defender now if we want to. We'll just set up Dunka. Then she has 3 damage, and that does 5. That is 8. He's at 9. We can hit it with those, then hit it with our Circle of Life. That will kill it. It'll take several turns to kill it, but it's the best use of our damage anyway. He doesn't have anything scary behind it. Maybe we just keep Dunka boosting for now and go for the Simlas. Seems like a pretty good option. Let's see what we get here. Remember, left side of our hand boosts Torque. That is pretty nice, but we will not take... We'll take the Sorceress over that, obviously. And again, the Sorceress. It's still better just to take the... It's still better just to take the good cards from the Battle of Harvest other than prioritizing Torque in this situation. Just because they're so good. One of them's probably going to live, and we'll see if we can't make another Bountiful Harvest. It's a Gunning Slash on one. Now we boost one. We have the Dryad, so we could go for the Caress with the extra value. I'll just play Tempering. So we want another Harvest. There it is. Uh, let's see. Oh, Sorceress, and it's on the left. Perfect. That boosts our Torque. If is turning into a pretty, pretty tall play of our own now. That's nice. You have to keep in mind that when we play Ithlene, Torque won't boost another unit, which is annoying. So we're going to lose those those four points. Now let's boost her. And what do we get this time? Another Harvest. Fantastic. Uh, Sorceress again. Very nice. Have you, any of you played Hearthstone? Remember when Draconid Operator came out and then it was the Priest... Is this whoever got more Draconid Operators from the opponent's deck with Draconid Operator? Because in case you didn't play the game, what happened is you played Draconid Ar Operator, and you looked at three cards in the opponent's deck, and you picked one and added it to your hand. So in a mirror match, you just try and pick more Operators than the opponent via RNG, and if you got more, you won the game. 
That's what's happening here, it feels like. We're just seeing how many Bobolana sorceresses we can get. And as long as we get more, we win. Uh, sorceress. It's kind of funny. We'll play this here. Our issue here is that we're running out of space because of all of the little... Let's boost this to six this way, get a play card on it. The reason we're doing this, by the way, is we're running out of space. Right, because every time I play in nature, we're getting a little guy. I expected him... Normally you expect some things to get removed. So, our issue is we're running out of space. If you play these nature cards, we won't have room for Gord and Torque. So we might have to, We'll just play them now. We have Last Say. We can't use it effectively, because we'll run out of room, and we won't be able to play our units. Uh, do we play Torque? We play Council first. I don't think it matters. We can go Circle of Life first. We'll boost Torque. We have room for this, because we only need three slots. So we need one for the tree ant spawned by Isaac's Council. We need one for Gord, and we need one for Torque. So three spaces left is what we need. Right now, we have that. We just can't play any nature cards, any other nature cards first. Now as far as what he's doing, it looks like he's just going for some value here. That's fine. We'll throw down our Torque here. Be a nice 16 point play. We're gonna go, we we'll go Gord. I, it doesn't matter here which one we play first. There's Gord for 17. The reason we go for Gord first is because the Dunka will boost an extra point in our hand. There's him. Okay, that's kind of what I figured was happening here. Olaf coming down next. I thought I'd be playing Olaf right now than him. But I think we have enough points to beat that anyway. And we can go for this. Oh, Dryad's Caress is worth the most. Let's just put it on you. Or you, it doesn't matter. Put it in the range row just in case there's a Yurden. If there is a Yurden, we lose the game, I think. Was it 4, 13? Okay, he doesn't have it. Yeah, we might. No, I think we still beat him if he has Yurden. Close, though. GG. Game two, imposter. Interesting, interesting. Now I have seen. Well, I'm not sure if it's this deck. What I have seen is people using imposter to trigger Artois. So they don't play any spine cards. At the end of the game, they just click imposter on one on your best card, which makes a copy and gives it spine. So you can just use Artois on that one card. I've seen that. I'm not sure it's good, but I've seen some people doing it. You just have Artois and then use the Imposter to give the one card spying of your choice. And then you have the card, you made it. You made a copy of it with Imposter, and you make a copy with Artois. So whatever the card is, you guarantee, you're pretty much guaranteed it'll be able to use it, because you'll get two copies of it. It's interesting, but we're not sure that's what he's playing here. I like opening with this, in case he has some kind of removal. He'll probably deal with this Hamadryad rather than something else. Not always, but it's a good setup. Let's see, we have Frakes in it. Ithlean, Sorceress, Dunka. We could have opened Dunka with Vavin to Call the Forest. But I wasn't really feeling it. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's going to be an imposter slash... What's it called? Um, illusionist deck. Master up tier plus illusionist. We'll go Circle of Life. We need this removed. We have really high value bronze cards. Bronze units. We do not want getting swapped. So we have to kill those. He has another one in his hand, probably. Uh, we can't kill the second one. Well, he doesn't necessarily have one in his hand. It's not like he's playing Ramon. We don't want to boost our Hamadryad anymore, though, just in case he does. Yeah, the idea here for his deck is he's going to try and steal our bronzes, and then he's going to have the one power Master of Puppets. Well, he's going to have Master of Puppets in our discard pile. Then he's going to create copies of them with Illusionists and steal our stuff again. 
That's his idea. War will be our the Pretty fun idea. Deals with uh, alumni really well. Probably why he's using it. Force assuming he can kill the defender, which I'm sure he can. Because he's Nilfgaard, he's got Indication. Probably a Heat Wave too. He's going to take Elven Seer. The reason we did that is because I don't care. I don't actually have a card in my hand to activate Elven Seer's ability. And he's not going to have a card to boost Elven Seer. So we'll bait with it. We'll bait with the second one too if he has another Master of Puppets. Although I doubt he does. Probably just has the one. And the nice thing here... Is that I think we'll get to use the Master of Puppets ability to steal our stuff back if we need it. Now he's going to just go into the second one. Well, we can play our second Elven Seer. Not really a problem. Then after we do that, we can go for the Dolbahana Sorceress. Seems pretty good. Attack to advantage her. Yeah, we'll just bait with this one again. We don't actually have a card for our Elven Seer. Like I said, we're just trying to have him use the Master Puppets on it. Yeah, just like that. What we expected. He's going to boost the Elven Seer. He should not boost the Elven Seer because we can take it with the Master of Puppets, by the way. He should boost the Artorius Veto. There we go. I'm not sure I said it. Oh, I said Elven Seer just because. But yeah, he should do that, which is correct, like we identified. Now we go for the Sorceress of Dolbathana. I'm going to tactical advantage it. He has nothing to kill this right now. He might invocation it or something or lock it, but there's nothing on the field which we can deal with. And then if he passes, we can steal back. Well, he doesn't pass, we take back our Elven Seers and click the Sorceress's order. Potentially he takes some points from us then, though. But we also can kill something. I think we just leave the Master of Puppets here as long as possible. We don't want him to have them back and the option to take our Sorceress or something. Oh, what's this? Okay, like I said. Well, now we can just take those. I'm not sure that was worth it, man. Like, not sure at all. We can either Simulas, but then we, our stuff dies these Sorceresses, but... I'm pretty sure we just Master of Puppets the Sorceresses, and that's enough value to get the round. We can Simlos, like I said, but I think we just do this. I mean, I, I, I don't think his plan was worth it there. Next turn we have two orders. We still have a Homodryad to play. Uh, we might as well boost it. But I mean, he has no... He has none of the Master of Puppets in our discard pile, so he can't Illusionist it. He'll Illusionist the Dolphana Sorceress for sure, but he needs to boost it still to get its order. And that might be difficult for him. Might be difficult. But uh, yeah, no Master of Puppets in his in our graveyard means he can't use the uh, Illusionist on them like he probably wants. And then we did win the round. So this is good. Simlos Torque. We don't have anything to buff with Torque unless we go for our Simlos this round, which I think we will. Right now, yeah, our hands looks pretty good. Right now, we're missing Ithilene, but that's about it. However, we can go for our Dunka, so I can hand boost here. We could have picked Ithilene. The reason I went with Dunka is I want the access to the three damage if we need it. If he's going for major, or if he's going for Illusionist, because we don't have a lot of damage, and I can't really afford him getting a couple of the. Sorceress is up. Like, if he plays... He's gonna spam a bunch of Illusionists, probably. Like, three or four. And if we can't kill the Sorceresses, we're in trouble. So I'd like the damage from her here. Over the extra buff from Ithleen. That's why we picked the Dunka there. We knew we were gonna get Dunka as our Dryad. But we could have gotten any of the Elves. So, we picked... We could have gotten Ithleen. We weren't guaranteed it. We were looking for Dunka. What will he do? Looks like Ramon is Illusionist. What a surprise. Uh, we can kill this. We just go Forest Protector into um, Circle of Life on this. We're pretty good. We can't kill the Illusionist itself. We're going to kill the Sorceresses. Gus goes as far as Simlos play here. He can't use his order yet. 
I don't think he has a way to boost it, so the next ones are the ones we're worried about. Oh, we can take the uh, Whisperer. It's pretty good. And then... Yeah, Sorcerer's looking pretty good. Or we can buff our... You can always... So unlike normally here, we can choose the option to buff our Torque instead of picking the best unit. I'd recommend still picking the best unit. But uh, our hand's getting pretty good here. Pretty good indeed. Now he's gonna get more illusionists. Okay, there's a bomb. No Madoc. Oh, there is Madoc. So it's a Madoc deck. It's Letho Kingslayer and Madoc with the illusionists. He just didn't get them round one. Very interesting deck. Interesting. Now, unfortunately for him, interesting doesn't mean good. I think it is probably good though. It's probably good against engine decks. But we're just gonna go for this and we'll go for another one of these harvests. And Sorceress again. We'll play her. Now this Whisper is going to get a lot of value in our range drill. We just have to make sure we don't fill up our rows again. We shouldn't have too much of a problem this round. We have plenty of space. Every time we boost Torque, we boost Gord. We can always just... Well, what I think we want to do here is save Gord and Torque for a short round 3 because we have last say. I'm going to force out his stuff, then go for that. Okay, this is what our rebuke's for. So we can remove that. Or we can tempering our sorceress, then try and use her to get rebuke. Let's do that. Perfect. So, the difference there is that if she's at 2, maybe he kills her. I'd rather get her order off. If he gets one sorceress order off, it's not too bad. All right, he's gonna have two more now. There they are. We can kill one. Then we can Dunka order the other, and that should be pretty good. And then I think we save these other cards for round three, and then finish with Torque Gord for a short round three. That should get us the game. That's our plan. We'll just pass after this. Don't have to worry about it. It's a GG. That was the plan, though. Game three, we have, oh, Patricidal Fury. Okay, this will be pretty difficult. The reason it's going to be difficult is because you can have Heart of Terror and Champion Charge, which are both two really tall removal cards, and then we are vulnerable to that. Like I said, when we went over the deck profile, we are more vulnerable to tall removal than normal, because Torx can get really big. So that's going to be a problem. We'll have to see what his actual deck is. But uh, that might be an issue. Maybe. Our hand looks okay. But yeah, regular Nature's Gift would certainly do better here, just because we have less vulnerability to removal. We'll go here and just start like this. Alright, there is the crack on crate. Now the reason we went for the uh, this lady first instead of the Homodrive like I normally would. That's not bad. And boost torque too. The reason I went for this lady first instead of the Homodriad is just that at six Homodriad might die to a Gear Scorpion decoction or a uh, what's it called? The six damage neutral one. Trial the grasses. You I kinda of expect him to have those. So I wanted something set up that didn't die to that. Okay, so Crack does remove that. Here's the thing though, every time we make, every time we play in nature, we're spawning a tree ant. And those tree ants are going to block the Crack on Crate damage for us. So even though we didn't get the Vitality 3 there, it's worth it because we have these tree ants to block the pseudo duel that Crack does. We're going to use them to block his damage. Hopefully he hasn't used the order on that guy yet. We can hit it with the uh, Circle Life. Fantastic. We'll hit it with Circle Life. There it is. And we'll boost our Torque. I'm going to try not really the card I want to get boosted by Torque, but anything getting boosted is good value. 
Maybe it's not too bad if he plays it. Our lowest stuff will get fought via the crack ability. We can just go for... We could go Force Protector for a another Circle Life. I like that. Kill this. Use Torque again. Basically here we're setting up carryover points. So I think we'll be fine winning this round. And then we need, we're just setting up carryover for round two and three. That should be pretty effective. Now, I wonder what he will do. Okay, so he's just going to do a little more damage. We could go for a buke. We can go for one of our Hamadryads, the short one. Or we could, uh, we're not going to pass, I don't think. We could. I think we will. His long round isn't that good. I don't think. I think our long round's better. So I think he's gonna rely on Croc, and we can kill Croc. And then Pirate, okay. Oh, he lost Harold. Gotta be careful of his abilities, gotta make sure the ship. Doesn't mean the game's over, though. Doesn't mean the game's over. We are vulnerable to his deck still. Okay. Let's see what we want to go for. We have Dunka. We can play for carryover as well if he passes. I like this hand. We don't want to draw into our um, Bountiful Harvests. Because we can play, if he does anything, we'll go Fav, Call the Forest. Okay, he's going to pass. Kind of what I expected. We can go Dunka for carryover points. It's just two, but it is carryover. We could also Fav potentially to play something. I like Dunka. We want more carryover. Alright, we've carried over a couple more points. Unfortunately, they're on our gourd. So, Champion's Charge, Heart of Terror, probably going to hit him. Points aren't going to be worth very much in the end. There's our Ithleen. Now, our hand should be pretty good here. I think this is everything we want, right? We go Fall of Call the Forest to Moss. I don't think we want any more cards from our deck. We don't want to mess up the setup of that. So we're going to replay Croc. We can kill that with a combination of Rebuke and our... What's it called? Circle Life. We can remove it. So that's not too big a deal. This is going to be Croc right here. There he is. So we can go Rebuke, Circle Life. We'll do that now. And again, this every time we spawn on a tree ant, it will block the croc pseudo duel. So that's good. That being said, I don't want to play around it the whole game, so we are gonna remove it. We will be removing him. There's the ship. Go circle of life. Remove this. And boost Torque. Stop boosting Gord, man. That's how we're going to lose the game. <clears throat> Alright, there's our Hershka. <clears throat> or his Hershka, I should say. We'll boost this Hamadryad again. And then we'll go for our other Hamadryad, probably. If these go earlier, it's probably good, because we could go with the Simloss. And the Bounce of Harvest could give us the Dried's Caresses. We remove Croc twice, and he has, he still has Champion's Charge and Heart of Terror, probably. And he might have another tall removal, like um, Heat Wave. He has no show, showing me no signs of Devotion, so... Well, no, he's playing. The, it is Devotion. He has the Herald. So he could still have Iced. Right there is a big card. Now, we could kill Iced. By sacrificing our sim loss play, and that's obviously not going to happen. So Ice is going to go off on his ship. I'll get the value. We go for our sim loss bountiful harvest here, and then so yeah, he has like I was thinking about his removal. He has Heart of Terror, Champion's Charge, and what else? 
He hasn't played a lot of provisions, but he did discard a Herald. So... Potentially has something like a... Who's the one who gives Rupture? Trigvi? He potentially has Trigvi. Uh, I think that's the only other tall removal card I can really think of right now. Oh, yeah, Yalmar. Probably has a Yalmar, too. So he has some removal. We have two sorceresses. We're up a fair amount, but he... He, his tall removal will be really good for a sour deck. What else will be problematic? That's gonna come back. We have the tempering to boost her though. And then what else do we have to deal with? Let's see. Oh, Arnagod, we have to kill him. He's uh, gonna damage us by our power. We can kill him with Ithilien here. Because he'll do we'll do ten to him and he'll do ten to us, right? So if we do this and then we hit Waylay, Waylay is less value than the Caress, but it puts it to 10. So we can kill it and we play our the time of the white frost. Oh, I didn't have its adrenaline Tonight. yet. That's awkward. Man. All right, there you go, guys. Remember to always check for the adrenaline. <laughs> it's trying to kill it. So we lose out on what? Three vitalities on our... We lose out on what? Six points on our ranged Hamadryad from that, then. So we lose by six, or if the Hamadryad lives, we'll know that. It was because of this. So we'll tempering here. And then, what do we get here? We have Orb. Orb's pretty good. Circle Life's good. Orb's probably the best. So yeah, potentially this would be six points taller on the Hamadryad. So now we can just play our Torque. Nice thing here is Torque's gonna be really tall. So when he damages it with Arnagod, we actually like play out of tall move a little bit and we kill it off. That's really good for us. We still have to watch out for um, Heart of Terror. I'm certain he's playing it. And there's that card. It's not that many points. Now we have Elven Seer and Sorceress here. I'd really want the Sorceress and Elven Seer. That's not great. The Sorceress is really the card we wanted off of that. We could have played that earlier, potentially, but we couldn't as long as Arnagod was alive, which is the problem. We had to kill Arnagod first. There's the Trigvi. So his last card is going to be Heart of Terror or Yalmar. My bet is going to be Heart of Terror. So unfortunately, this Gord, despite being a 23, is going to play for 2. And I think... Well, we still might be fine. We still might be fine. Our Hama Drive potentially was a 22 here instead. If we lose, it's because we played... We didn't realize his adrenaline wasn't ready yet. Okay, he got us. GG. So what do I think about the deck when I change? It's obviously worse than the meta, the meta nature's gift deck, which is pretty self-explanatory is because the meta deck is going to be the best one, but it's not that bad. The issue is you play into tall removal heavily. So against that last person, for example, we had like, we would have had a, we had a big Tomadry, we had a big Torque, we had a big, well, two big Tomadry as he killed one. That was a lot of value. He killed, he heart of terror at our gourd. It's a lot of value. So last say, like always, is really important with this deck, and it's more important than regular with the regular Nature's Gift deck, just because your Gord's going to be bigger, most cases. So that's really important. And then, yeah, the long round's weaker because you don't have Gezeros or Wrath of Broccolon. And then the short round is a little stronger unless they have tall removal. So that's the difference here. You also have less tempo plays. So Ithnine, for example, really not a great tempo play. And then uh, Frank Accident, which we want to try out and never ended up playing. So we can't really know if he's good or not. But yeah, this is the deck. I think the thing is, I wish there was an 8 provision card. Like a 9 or something that I actually liked and would want to include. Because Frank Accident just is like the best of the choices. Right? I mean, look here. We could go for Sheldon. 
But I mean, do I really want to go for Sheldon? No, I don't. It's it's too risky, I think. We can go Ifleen on Sheldon, but maybe we go Freaks in it for Sheldon and we try and play more hand buffy. I mean, the reason we didn't play Sheldon, I should have mentioned this in the beginning. The reason I wasn't playing Sheldon is because it's so if you're boost if all you're boosting with your choices is gonna be Torque. There's no guarantee the boost land on Sheldon. And without any boost on him, he's really bad. You really need him to be at at least a, a 10 or prefer well, at least an 11, really, for him to be any good. Because you want to generate value, right? He generates 5 value at 11. That's 5 removal value. He's 11 for 8 with 5 damage. That's good. 10 for 8 with 4 is pretty good, I guess. But you really want to be at that 11 or higher. The problem is... That's not really consistent if we're only playing the uh, cards here. The other option here, which I think I want to try, is we take out these two. And we go for either the control options of CRN and Morin, like I mentioned earlier. We can go with a double smuggler. I think I prefer the control options. Maybe we even go with a... Maybe we go Ida and CRN. I like Ida. Vitality has some synergies. You can remove locks, which is pretty good with a purify. I think I want to try this. The deck's pretty fun. It's not as good as the regular deck, but you can make really tall gourds again, and that's pretty fun. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll see you next time.